Well, guys, I can hardly believe that I'm saying this, but I'm very pleased to welcome you all back to my fifth drawing video. We've come a long way in only a little bit of time, so thanks to everybody who's been joining us thus far on this uh, nice little project that we've got going here. To mark this splendid occasion, I've finally purchased a proper mic. Yay! You guys put up with crap quality for long enough. It was as if I was speaking into one of those, you know, tin can phones from our childhoods with a little string attached so you could communicate with the next tree for it over. Well, those days are behind us. I'm not going to bore you with the same tedious nonsense from before. As always, I have the flags taken from Wikipedia for the color and a small script at the bottom so I can easily, you know, follow a plot line. But you don't really need to do this for your comics. I just find it personally helpful. The plot of this particular comic today is going to brush upon something that we've all been seeing go around the news, especially this past month. And this is the short attention span of the West, specifically in context of the war in Ukraine and the war between Israel and Hamas. Pretty fun, eh, for a drawing video? This time last year, pretty much all of the collective West, aside from those dastardly Hungarians, were declaring never-ending support for Ukraine. This never-ending support was even said to go so far as to let Ukraine not only into NATO, but into the European Union as well. This is leaving aside the vast amounts of vehicles and Western weaponry that were also supplied to them in order to fend off the Russian invasion. They were seeing billions upon billions of collective aid every month from not only the United States, but from other heavy hitters like the United Kingdom and Germany. Honestly, things were looking very good for Ukraine, especially after two hugely successful counteroffensives in both the Kharkiv region and the western part of the Kherson region. However, things would then take a sadder turn for Ukraine. The Ukrainian army's highly anticipated summer counteroffensive, which had the ambitious goal of reclaiming the cities of Tokmak and Melitopol and possibly even Berdyansk to split the land bridge to Crimea, did not go as well as they had expected. As a result, the front lines had barely moved in over a year since Ukraine's Kharkiv and Kherson offensives. Both sides went from conquering and liberating vast swaths of land to instead having months-long battles for villages and small cities. Now, to the Western observers, it seemed as if it had reached a stalemate. And unfortunately, here in the West, we have really, really short attention spans, and ADD is running rampant. Due to this hardening of the lines, financial and military donations to Ukraine have already fallen across the board from their peak in the beginning of the conflict. For instance, in my home country of Canada, we have 18, uh, $1,860 million, I believe, in aid budgeted out for Ukraine in 2023. Now, that may seem like a lot of money, but keep in mind, in 2022, we were giving billions. It will fall only again next year to $318 million, and then 100 and something million the year after that. Lots of this has to do with political infighting across the board in the West. However, as the West bores and leaves, the aid eventually will too, heartbreakingly. Q, October 7th, 2023. What a shit show. Hamas militants storm into Israel, attacking homes, taking hostages, taking lives, and they also crashed and totally ruined a music festival. The whole thing was really awful. And to say the least, everybody involved had a really bad day. Well, except for some militants. Something had to be done, clearly. Well, Israel thought so too. Enter the Hamas and Israel war 2023 edition. Because keep in mind, they've had a few others. Once war was declared by Netanyahu after the attacks, it seemed as if the news cycle completely forgot about Ukraine, along with most people who care to follow news cycles. The talk of the town went from Ukraine's progress in the summer counteroffensive to Israel preparing to invade Gaza after the attacks. Then the news cycle drifted to Israel's, uh, let's call them explosive actions in Gaza. Now there's wars in the Middle East and wars in chat rooms and on internet forums over who's right, who's wrong. It just seems like there's no room for Ukraine anymore. Sometimes it almost feels as if we've all found a new toy to play with. It's like a collective ADD brought on by the fact that the Ukraine war had kind of stagnated and the Israel-Hamas war is kind of like the new flavor. Speaking of cool toys, the United States sent not one, but two aircraft carriers to the Mediterranean Sea to keep watch over Israel. Talk about a good friend. Ukraine didn't get any of those. I guess that's because Russia is spookier than a bunch of militants with crude rockets, Kalashnikovs, and RPGs. But let's not talk about the Russian Navy getting beat by a country with no Navy at all. They've been embarrassed enough already. So yeah, that's a brief background of the comic. 
but I'm sure you all gathered that from what I've been drawing here. As you can see here for this part, I decided to portray this brutal conflict in which we've seen rocket barrages, whole neighborhoods getting leveled, and awful gunfights simply as two dudes fighting with kitchen knives and screaming in each other's faces. They call that a microcosm, or something. Now, if you think about it, all wars are really just two dudes fighting with poorly drawn kitchen knives as they scream in each other's faces. It doesn't always have to be pictured so seriously. And also, I can't draw rifles or RPGs to save my life. I remember trying to draw a javelin a little while back for a comic, and I had Ukraine firing that shit backwards. Oh man, I know nothing about guns. People really enjoyed calling me out for that one. But honestly, it was well deserved. But as they say, blah blah blah, accuracy in my pollen ball, whatever, it's less likely than you think, so... Yeah. Well, we're about to move on to my least favorite part of the comic. This. Uh, this will be the scene where America breaks poor Ukraine's little heart and disappears into a puff of smoke to go end the Armageddon in Israel. So, wind is pretty hard to draw, so I just like to stick with that cartoonish sort of puff of smoke you would see in the Looney Tunes if somebody took off. I think it does the job and it does it quite well. Now, I know, and this goes back to that Armageddon comment, I know a lot of evangelicals are weird about the Armageddon. The word Armageddon was named after the town of Megiddo, which is currently in Israel, just north of the West Bank, and evangelicals think the battle of the end days will happen there. Or, I might be mixing up my Christians, but some somebody does. So, that's why I thought it was important that America left poor Ukraine in the dust to go bear witness to this crazy event. That at least some Baptists or Evangelicals or Mormons or one of them, somebody believes in that battle at Megiddo. But that's not important. What's important is that I get to draw another cute little helmet on Ukraine. It isn't accurate to the ones they're using now. In fact, it's not even close. It's more accurate to those British World War I type Brody helmets that you'd see in the trenches. But you know, it does the trick here. And as y'all know well, I do love to draw little helmets for my balls. It keeps them safe from fascist aggression, but it doesn't protect them from heartbreak. Man, I really hate drawing him all dejected like this. Poor little guy. Oh. If you've made it this far, I'd like to both thank and congratulate you. We've made it to the very final panel of this comic. For this panel, I'm finally going to introduce, wait for it, Russia. Wow, I have Russia, Ukraine, Israel, Palestine, and the United States all in a single comic. I should win, like, some type of award for that, like a, like a gold medal in pandering. Instead of portraying Russia grotesquely, like I usually do, I decided to go with the classic style where, where he's sort of just dopey, but he really likes to steal land still. I figured it would fit well with the rest of the comic, what, with Israel and Palestine duking it out with low-quality butcher knives instead of using bombs and guns. This will be the version of Russia from the old comics, where he's kicking Poland off of a trampoline, or popping his balloons, just for the fun of it. I think if you make everything as dead serious as the event it's actually based on, you begin to lose sight of the whole satire thing, and honestly, in my opinion, that's a big part of the charm of these comics. Well guys, that pretty much does it. We've finished. I know this one was short, but I'll do another longer comic again soon. I know the last one was pretty long, and that one was pretty fun also. And as always, I thank you all for watching if you've made it this far. I really do appreciate it. Now, without any further ado, let's see that final product.